Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Click PLC high speed counter input and we'll look at particularly the interval measurement mode of this uh, uh, counter. So if we look at um, what we're going to do is take our dart magnetic pickup and which is basically wired into typically into a motor shaft and here's our wiring diagram here which is our black our signal which is our white and our red which is our plus uh, voltage and we will now take that into the click PLC and this can be wired up either uh, syncing or sourcing for the connection so our actual diagram or wiring diagram to the click we have our common which is sitting at plus voltage and then we have our X1 which is our output signal so this would be the white wire of the dart and we have our power uh, wire which is our red and then our black is our zero volts so that's the way we actually wired in our click so if we look at the, the program itself it all starts from using the high-speed counter input which is right here or you can go through the navigation and go to our high-speed counter input and when we do we call up our uh, high-speed input configuration window and what we're looking for is the measurement uh, interval measurement which is right here so you can see here that we can actually uh, through our timing chart measure the starting of each of the pulses and time that interval or we can use dual and start and look at the beginning of the the first one versus the beginning of the next one so that's the interval measurement we'll hit use this mode when we do our interval measurement configuration comes up and again it gives us a, a diagram here or a picture of exactly what we're um, doing with this mode of counter so down here we have our name interval one is the default name we got we will click leave this clicked uh, saying automatically assign our nicknames the actual interval time we will set this for DD1. So now, it, now our chart has changed. It shows us DD1. And we'll ch call the unit of measure. We'll use uh, microseconds instead of milliseconds. Just to give us a, a number that varies a little more. Then our pulse input. This is actually the input signal connected to our PLC. And where it's actually uh, coming from. So our pulse, we'll just click on it and we will select X, X1. See, it shows us all of the uh, inputs that we could have, but we have it wired into X1. And we said the rising edge. Now we could use this and call it interrupt um, routine every time the pulse enable and the valid interval was measured. And we also can put in a measured complete bit that will turn on to actually tell us when that interval has completed measure and that's the signal itself and then we have to reset that using uh, some logic so we'll leave that off for now so that's what we're going to program and we'll just hit OK and we'll hit OK again and now our program is actually in um, or, or saved we'll save it and next we will actually transfer that to our PLC. Hit OK. And we'll do a runtime error or runtime transfer. There we go. So as the PLC is still um, programming, we're actually dumping that program in. Now if we actually look at our hardware you can see here here's my click and I'm actually connected through my Ethernet port right here to my software and the software must be version 2.3 or above and then I have my dart magnetic pickup attached to a drill that'll give us our pulses in my dart you can see my black is connected to my zero volts red to my plus voltage and my plus voltage also comes over to my common of my input and then my white wire is my signal going to X1 
So that's all my connections and, and everything uh, looks like it's ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll just call up the um, data view. And under the data view, this is uh, DD1 where we specified the current measurements going to be uh, going to. So if we just start the motor here, um, you'll now see that our current value is changing. Now remember, this is in um, uh, microseconds. So you see then we have the, the time or di distance between the, the two there. So uh, the faster I go, the smaller that number gets. So that smaller number represents there's a, going to be less of a time frame, just ex exactly as we expected in our timing chart. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. And if you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you have any more, and if you want more information about us, or you want to get our two free eBooks on numbering systems or bus data logging, please click on the link in the description below and get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure that you hit subscribe so you can get more videos like this in the future. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.